Welcome to Creativity Talks with me, Hazri Idros, founder of the Speaking Factory, keynote speaker for creative leadership and communications. People have this misconception that creativity is only meant for the arts. So in this Creativity Talks, we are going to explore how creativity can be applied in many areas such as business, career and life and how creativity can help us to be better versions of ourselves. To do this, there will be invited guests who could be everyday people or experts who will share with us their journey and discuss topics such as personal development, personal branding, book publishing, mindset, creative process, and many, many more. I thank you for joining me in this journey where creativity and personal growth collide. Enjoy the episode. Hello, hi, and welcome back to our Creativity Talks. This time around episode 14, and we have one interesting person, actually uh, an old friend, a good friend of mine, who you can see down there, already mentioned his name down there, right? Okay, um, our, our guest today is a person who has actually been involved in the art scene for a very long time, and uh, I'm happy to have worked with him together along the way. And today, let's invite the one and only Anwar Hadi Ramli. Hello, welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah. I, your introduction uh, uh, made me very shy. Eh? <laughs> uh, hey, I know. Thank you very much for for coming on board, lah. For for today's sharing session, just share, share here, 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 and there. All right, thank you. Mm. Thanks a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. I think because like, as mentioned, this session is very much to share to the audience on how people can apply creativity, uh, not just the arts, uh, beyond the arts as well. So I think you are at the best position to share because you are in the arts and you also, uh, I believe, you applied this along the way at other areas as well. So maybe to start with, um, let's get a little bit, let's get to know a little bit know, uh, more of you, yeah? All right. Um, okay, I, I'm, I must say that I'm very uh, fortunate and very honored to be working with you all the while back in Polytechnic because we were Polytechnic buddies back then. We started on, on theater in, in school and then go into professional theater. I think you are one of those that actually continue the journey in the arts. So can you share with us um, your uh, highlights of your art journey in, in, in the nutshell? Uh, highlights of the arts journey. I think it has been very uh, exciting very uh, fruitful. Um, I would say the, the, the word that I will use would be exciting. It's been very exciting. It's been very exciting the past 20, 20 years. Um, it's a, it's a, I don't know whether I can say it as a, a, a career, but I guess it is, right? <laughs> it's a career, it's a job that is always very um, dynamic, very very exciting every day every day there's always something exciting to look forward to uh -huh. uh, the best thing is that um you get to experience uh a lot of things uh, you see my face light up right yeah, so I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining imagining things the, the things that i've been doing yeah it's been very it's been very exciting get to perform with a lot of people get to perform in, in a lot of venues uh events yeah yeah it's it's not routine, but it has, in a nutshell, it has been very, very exciting. Ah, all right, all right. And you actually, one of your works um, actually got accredited um, in, in getting the award, right? Can you share about, about the works that, that has been given the, what we call the <coughs> Liter Literary Award, the Anugrah Persuratan? It was 2017, 2018, 2017, right? Yes, 2017, 2017, uh, Literary Award, uh, one of my scripts, uh, the title of the script is The Assumed Vicious Cycle of a Malayu Youth. Mm, it won the best theater, theater, theater script in 2017. Uh, it's, it's, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, 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 a drama or a theater competition. It was more of a literary competition, uh, mm. not competition, a literary uh, platform. So it wasn't actually just for drama like best theater scripts or what. Or what. It's more of a in the category of theater scripts, uh, I want the best script. But there were also other create, uh, categories like um, TV scripts, uh, books, 
uh, mm. poetry. Yeah, it was more of a literary award. So, so yeah, I guess the script was very literary. <laughs> so, do, 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 do you expect that? Uh, because you, because I know you started out as an actor, right? Uh, mm. Then with a lot of uh, acting and along the way, you do directing and script and then you got the award for that. Do you expect that? Uh, okay. Uh, in in terms of what you mentioned just now, uh, uh, initially, I would rather be an actor, you know, <laughs> in the first place. I would rather be an actor and then become a, become a really a full-time professional actor, maybe get awards for best actor or something. But <laughs> but actors' jobs are I mean like you have to expand your expand your your, your, your horizon and you cannot just mm. do act, acting, you have to do other things as well. So what I did was I did acting, then I did directing, I did writing. Mm. Yeah. So um, it wasn't it wasn't really a surprise. But what was a surprise was be, uh, because it was a Malay Literary Award. Mm. <laughs> the surprise is the script was written, uh, half of the script was written in English. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a surprise. It wasn't because uh, I was an actor or a writer. The surprise is because the play was, half of the play was written in English, but it won uh, the Malay Literary Award. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's very interesting. You probably have a certain criteria that actually you meet. I think that is why you, you got it. Congratulations, I must say. Congratulations to, to you. All right. So let's take a little bit um, behind or rather backtrack a little bit. Um, you were with me. You were, we were together with the National Rugby Board. <laughs> we were in Polytechnic and then we worked together in the National Rugby Board. I was at a different department. You were a different department. And then mm -hmm. you're one of those who actually ventured full-time into the arts. What was the reason and what um, pull you into to be in, in the arts journey? Um, I don't know. I don't know whether this will sound um, <laughs> this will sound inspiring or not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying. I'm just gonna say it as it is. Okay. So okay. Maybe some people might think it is inspiring. Some might think it is uh, negative. I, I don't know. Okay. But this is <laughs> what happened. This is what happened. Mm. Okay. So uh, I finished. Uh, I completed my full time national service in 2002 mm -hmm. yeah and then uh end of 2002 and then after that i think singapore was still in a recovery stage of a, of a recession at that time mm, yep. in 1998 there was this uh, recession or financial crisis in southeast asia so somewhere in 2002 you were still recovering so uh, during 2003 uh, late 2002 2003 half of 2004 i applied for many many jobs and couldn't get any mm. yeah I think most of our most of our friends who finish and at that time we were all struggling <laughs> to find jobs. At that yes, time. yes. Yeah, yeah. So we, we couldn't find jobs. Uh, we tried. We applied for many places. At many places, we couldn't get jobs. Um, but uh, since we were into the theatre arts in uh, in polytechnic, uh, so while waiting or while looking for jobs, we also auditioned for. Uh, <laughs> for theater, theater works or theater jobs. So, so we went for auditions. So I did, I went for auditions. And then so for the first, for the whole of 2003, the whole of 2004, uh, while looking for jobs, I was already doing theater, theater mm. works uh, full time in that, in that sense, I was doing theater works. And um, we applied for jobs, we didn't get it. We applied for theater works, we got it. So mm. yeah, so we, we really enjoyed ourselves doing theater works. And then in 2004, finally, we most of us got jobs. As for myself, in 2004, I finally got a job at the uh, National Library Board. So I worked for uh, two years only, one contract, mm. <laughs> one contract mm. for two years. So while working in the library, I realized that even though I've been, even though when I was younger in polytechnic, my dream was to work in the library. I was always, ah. to become, uh, I always wanted to become a librarian. Uh, yeah, but uh, with my qualification, I could only become a library officer. I couldn't become a librarian. So, uh, yeah, but from young, from primary, secondary, I always wanted to be a librarian. Uh, one of the career choices, I wanted to be a librarian. Mm. And then uh, in the library, so when I sit in the office, you know, do office work, I somehow miss <laughs> the theater works in 2003, <laughs> in 2004, you know. Even though sometimes I still do artworks uh, after work, for example, uh, finish work at 6 o'clock and quickly go run for rehearsals, you know. 
but it was quite tiring, you know, like then morning you do work and then you go to work and after that you go rehearsal and then you do that again for seven days a week. So it was quite tiring. So in, in 2006, at the end of my contract then I think, okay, I'm still young. I thought, I even told my manager, I even told my manager that I, I'm still young. I was only 26 years old. Can I go back to do theatre? Mm. <laughs> Let me enjoy myself, do theatre. And I'm telling you, I told the manager, you know, uh, I forgot her name, it's this, this I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not discounting the fact that after I'm done, I'm going to come back to the library because I really want to work in the library. <laughs> yeah, so I told her, <laughs> I will stop this contract for a moment. You know, like play football, you know, right? Like, so we go for another club, go for another club. Ah, I thought, yes, <laughs> so after like, the contract end, then she asked, well, to renew, I want to do theater works first. And maybe, maybe about three years or four years after that, I come back to the library. Something like that, that's what I said. <laughs> and then, so I, then after that, uh, I go back into doing theatre. Wow, then I felt the shortness of doing theatre, of doing <laughs> artwork. One year became two years, two years became three years, three years became four years, four became, four became ten, ten became fifteen. In a blink of an eye, you didn't even realise that time has passed. Then, uh, oh yeah, it's been so long, it's been so long. Even... Yeah, and oh, I'm still not over it. I'm still enjoying oh, it. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's, what, that's what, what we call passion, yeah? Yeah, with yeah. passion, you can actually do anything. Wonderful, wonderful, yeah. You, you know, you mentioned yeah. um, you were with NLB for two years so for the contract thing, right? So that, that mm. two years uh, reminded me of NS. <laughs> two years NS. <laughs> I think our time was two and a half years, right? Plus minus. I think now people uh, went through for two years NS. And recently, I saw that you are very active in LinkedIn and you have been posting... Uh, post after post on your national service. I thought, I thought that I find it interesting and I think that's one of the reasons I, I invited you over to share, uh, see how the topic can actually relate on the challenges you face during during NS. If you can share with, with us at, uh, over here, uh, what actually um, inspired you or what triggered you to write that uh, articles or your experiences in, in NS? Okay. Well, first and foremost, why I write those, uh, those articles is because um, <laughs> Because during this COVID period, a lot of my shows are cancelled. Uh, a lot of my classes are cancelled or postponed. So I've been sitting and thinking, what am I supposed to do now? Uh, <laughs> okay, I mean, like there are a lot of other things that I've been doing, lah. But uh, blogging is one of it. Uh, so uh, I also have uh, students. I have a lot of students. Uh, my drama students. Yeah, I still, uh, I, I'm still in contact with them, and then one of the one of the common things that we shared about whenever they graduated is that oh no, I'm not going to NS already. <laughs> yeah, because my students are yeah, mm. students. so they already they always say I'm going to NS. How is NS? Those kind of things, and then um, they say. Uh, they, they asked me how NS is like, this kind of thing. And then I told them that uh, NS, at that my time in NS and your time is different. Yeah, uh, it's, it's some parts are still similar, but there are a lot of things that are different. Yeah, so you cannot really compare. You just have to go there and enjoy yourself. Um, which reminded me that how different is different. Then I realized mm. that uh, we, are, we are one of the uh, last few batch of the second generation army, our our, our oh yeah. yeah 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 correct 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 yeah. the uniforms ah uh, the, the yeah the, the uniforms the, the, the weapons shape. yeah correct correct yeah. correct correct. Yeah, I remember, I remember that time. One. Yes, yes, we were the conversion stage. We had to take uh, M16 during BMT and then cut learn to the conversion course for SAR 21. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 that's, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so during during NS, if you can share, do you face um in challenges or interesting experience uh during during those time in, in NS? Um, <clears throat> the main 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 challenge that I cannot forget until today. Uh, which is the number one challenge in NS is um, physical fitness. Oh, okay. <laughs> physical okay. fitness. Okay. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not created physically built. Uh, I'm not a physically built person. I'm very skinny. I think you. You saw some photos of me, or you even, or even you know who I, how I was. Yeah, like, I was man. very, very skinny. I was yeah. only sixty kilos. Uh, there about fifty five to sixty. There, there was during like, during NS. During NS. During NS. During NS. Yeah. That was my weight range. 
um, to 60 kilos. You know, when you go to NS, sometimes those those people who are, who are obese, they have to go through those uh, slimming programs mm. yeah, to, to lose weight. Uh, I had to go to... Uh, <laughs> uh, Expansion weight, course. <laughs> weight, weight gain programs. Uh, programs. <laughs> I remember I had to go through weight gain pro- program. They, they made me eat, they made me exercise, but I still couldn't gain weight uh, at that time. So that was my main challenge. Uh, the challenge is because uh, I'm already so skinny and then they posted me to a guts unit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the guts unit, the load that I had to carry was uh, was really, really a lot. It was really a lot. I mean, you know, if you imagine guts soldiers, well, they're very big yeah. size, muscular size. And you see this one skinny fellow still have to carry the same load. I have to say at that time, I was only 60 kilos. My load was 40 kilos. It's more than half of my body weight. Wow. So that, that, was, that, was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a challenge. That was really a challenge. Then my, my knees, my knees, my back, my, my, my shoulders, my back of my neck. Uh, I was walking in slouching throughout. Uh, I really mm. had troubling times with the weight uh, in, wow. in the unit. So that was the number one challenge. And uh, yeah, I had to stay in the guards unit for all the way <laughs> until two, two year, one year plus yeah. right because the first half of the yeah. year the first 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 six months plus minus the more the more bmt they have to go through yeah. training and, and stuff right so so how do yeah. how do you overcome how do you overcome that that challenge wow it is really heavy i know i will have trouble myself definitely <laughs> okay if you want to think of how to solve it or how i overcame it creatively would yeah be... yep yeah. <laughs> would be um, at that time um, especially during uh, mission exercises when mm. I had to carry all those load uh, walking in the forest or walking in the jungles in Singapore or in other countries what made me overcome it was uh, I imagined that I was in a movie <laughs> I imagine, <laughs> I imagine that I am an actor in a war movie. Wow. So, yeah. So because previously in polytechnic we were all acting nonstop, right? We were acting in this, acting in that. So well, I was very tired. Let's say I was very tired. My legs were buckling in in, in the jungle during the mission. You know, walking with the load, and then how to make myself going is that I imagine that oh, there's a, there's a camera taking taking videos, huh? taking film footage of us walking in the jungle and also if you are in a film then you have to look good right so, so you cannot be uh yeah you cannot like that oh tired or oh, you still have to look good and then someone i was a, i was a commander i was a section commander and also i was a, after that i became a gpmg commander a gpmg commander the load was even heavier than a section commander so yeah so you have to look good so my man at the back i mentioned there's a camera then i have to motivate them yeah have to look good on a movie <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so that kind of motivated me to keep on walking to keep on fighting you know cannot look tired cannot feel tired you know you have to look good for a movie somebody's going to watch this movie and you don't want people to watch your movie making you <laughs> look like you're a weakling you know you have to look strong so yeah this is that's, that's, very, that's very interesting and it's not um, not difficult for you, isn't it? Because we, you are in the art scene and we have this good imagination that really help us. If that helped us to push further, I think that would definitely help. Definitely. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, only yeah, mentioned, yeah. You mentioned about leading your team. You were section commander then you move into um, the GPNG commander in, for those orders not in the army. A GPNG is a, what, what do you call general what, 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 what GPMG uh, mean? Machine gun, general uh, purpose machine gun, is it? Is it? General purpose, general machine, purpose gun. machine gun, right? So it's a, it's a heavy mm-hmm. stuff on top of our normal, that back, tank, back then was M60, then then SAR-21. We have another weapon representing mm-hmm. the platoon itself. And we're talking mm-hmm. about being a leader. So mm-hmm. uh, how do you actually, what, what do you do? Um, because you know their chips are down, the people are down, all these tires. So what do you do as a leader to actually mo- motivate them, if you could remember? <laughs> Do you realize I keep laughing because because I always try at that time I always try to to make the the situation fun. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is okay. For example, for example, um, <laughs> for example, let's say we are in a we are in Australia. For example, and then we. The GPMG team usually have to be separated from the rest of the platoon. Mm. 
mm. usually usually so let's say the platoon will assault this way the gpmg team will be be uh, separated from the platoon to go find another fire base a different area to to do a covering fire while the platoon assault that, that thing so uh my men, my men usually would be quite low morale once they know that our fire base would be in a different place and then quite far. Then they would ask, hey, where is our fire base uh, over here? And then they say, ah, oh, well, very far. Then after that, we have to link up with the rest of the platoon again. So we will look, we will walk on our own, you know, three of us, <laughs> three of us, look up the hill. Okay, the fire base is on top here. So yeah, the morale will be usually very low like, within mission. But how do we overcome it is that we will, we will think of funny things like, uh, Sometimes you think like, okay, we are going on a hiking. Okay, children, let's go on a hiking trip. <laughs> okay, and then we will walk up the hill like as if we are hiking. Uh, okay, or, or we will we will sing children's songs. You know, like, we are going on a trip. You know, the something because there's no one else because you're already yeah. on the platoon, so we don't have to Correct. maintain like like tactical tactical sounds. So we don't have like shh, shh, shh. so just say. Hey. So this is the one, let's go, let's go. We are going on a trip, we're going on a hiking. Or sometimes we get tired. What what we did was we we we, we took out um some contraband rations, you know. So <laughs> we are not allowed to bring some rations to our field, but sometimes we bring uh we brought chocolates, you know, sometimes we brought uh <laughs> we brought uh biscuits, chocolates or soft drinks, and then we always we always prepare ourselves saying that these chocolates and soft drinks, we can only drink it once we complete this mission. Okay, so ah. it can only, yeah, yeah. So we will dangle in front of us these kind of things to put inside our bed case. Only after we complete this mission, then we can drink it or we can eat it. Yeah, so those, those are the kind of things that we, we did, la. you know, like, uh, then when we charge up the hill, then we will say to our guys, our friends, okay, charge, uh, do it for the 100 plus, <laughs> do it for the sneakers, uh... yeah. do it for the ca- Maggie, do it for the curry Maggie. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so we, our minds are like that. La. We try so you just fun. change the mindset of, of that, right? So so do you think um if we if we were to ask you um the traits of a leader, so where what do you think are the a must must have? I know fun definitely will have to be to be there. I'm not sure because you I think you manage it well in, in terms of that. What would be other traits that you think a leader must have, especially when situation really make everybody down? Um <clears throat> This is a bit hard for me because I don't know. To be honest, I don't know whether I'm a natural leader or not. But mm-hmm. we were trained. We were trained to be leaders. So some, maybe some of that, some of, some other leaders might 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 take it in their stride. Might be more natural for them. Some of them could be a bit hard. Uh, for me, it was quite hard. Uh, I, I I always had to be on my toes at all times to keep uh, the guys' morale up. Uh, at the same time to keep my morale up you know mm, so, um, yep. so what are the traits would be uh yeah like you mentioned uh trust uh, mm. creativity i think for me at that time mm. and maybe also for now it is transparency i think transparency wow transparency i think i think i think it's transparency uh because in the army and also now when we are working Sometimes the leaders try to hide certain information uh, from from the from from their peers or from their from the from their subordinates or something or mm. from, their, from their workers. Like, like let's say they just say, uh, "Okay, we're going up this hill and then we're going to charge." Okay, we're going up this hill, we're going to do a fire base. Or even in this uh, work in a normal work line, the corporate work line. Okay, this is our project. Uh, this is uh, we're going to do this uh, project, and then these are the things that we're going to do. But sometimes there's no, uh, there, there are always things that they hide, you know, uh, maybe professionally or maybe because of personal reasons, I don't know. But I think as a leader, may, be it in the army or be it in the, in the working world, is to be transparent mm. about uh, everything. We'll just say that, um, uh, okay, rehearsals will be at this time and at this time. Um, oh, okay, I'm late. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm late because I have something. I don't even say that. Uh, you know, sometimes when, when leaders, they come late, they never say why they are late, you know, those kind of things. Uh, like, they, mm. they, they just come, they are, sorry, I'm late, I'm held up with something. That's the most they would say. But 
when you say it properly, you know, I say, mm. uh, sorry, I'm late because uh, sorry, I'm late because uh, I really had uh, I really had a stomach ache. It's really even even those minor minor reasons. I had stomach ache. I had to stop over at the <laughs> the, the petrol station. You know, uh, you know, so people can trust you, and they trust you. They will work for you. And then they will, mm-hmm. after they work for you, they will work with you. Wow! Yeah. Wow! That's yeah. just, that's wonderful, wonderful advice by by Anwar. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Transparency, one of the core things as a leader, especially right now, things change, right? So we need mm. to know what's going on. That people can can trust. Yeah, transparency builds trust. Wonderful. That that's mm. nice. Yeah. Mm. If I were to share with, if you can share with us, um, creativity. What is creativity to you, Anwar? <laughs> creativity to me is uh, to me, eh, on top of my head now. Uh, yeah. Um, using your brains, using our brains to make things work. Wow! Wow! <laughs> makes sense. Especially makes sense. on top of my head. Yeah, on top of my head. I never wow. planned. Uh, using our <laughs> brains to make things work. Yeah, whatever, wow. uh, whatever. Make things work in terms of whatever. You know, today oh shucks, uh, suddenly my door cannot be unlocked. Or something. Mm. Uh, so, uh, how to make this work? Ah, uh? go and uh, uh, I don't know. Go, go and. Use pin or something, or yeah, those kind of things. I think there will be because the creativity also. But yeah, yeah to make true, things true, work, true. To make things work. Oh, oh yeah, problem. the other day, the other day, my my motorcycle main stand drop. Main stand so drop while yeah, you're riding. So wow. Okay. While riding, then I hear. <laughs> then Are you? I'm trying to look to find out what, ah. what happened. Uh, and then one of the one side of the main stand drops, so only one side main stand is still on there, so it's dangling. Ah. So I okay. Think, Yeah. Oh no. Okay. So this is an example. How to? How do I? I need to travel. Okay. Mm. I need to make things work to travel. So what do I? So do? what? What do you do? That? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have. I don't have the wedding machine and everything. Yeah. 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 Right. So what do I do? Yeah. So I look around. I really look around. Look into my box. Look into my bag. I don't know what. Uh, yeah. I look around. Look around. Then what? Oh, then I found cable tie. You know, spare cable tie. So just, <laughs> just tie. Just the cable tie. Tie up to other parts of the body. Hold it up. Okay. Right. Yeah, using ah. my brain to make sure it works. It works now. It doesn't drop. Then travel to the nearest workshop somewhere. Ah, uh, wonderful! <laughs> I, I like I like your definition. Creativity. As long as you think of something to get things work, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So we we almost come to the end of the our just very quick pro. Thank you, Anwar, for for sharing. But before we go, maybe you could um share with us some advice because currently we are really in the end unprecedented situation. Things change. What you see today may not appear tomorrow. What you don't see today might appear tomorrow. People lose jobs. People get. Uh, retrench whatsoever, but uh, based on uh, the World Economic Forum, right? Um, this it says that creativity is still one of the number one skill to have. So, if you could advise us how, what, um, what we can do to increase our creativity creativity level. Mm. Wow, it's a, it's a it's a hard but easy question <laughs> 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 because uh. It, To me, maybe it sounds easy. You know, maybe some people might say, "Hey, this is too simplistic." Mm. Uh, yeah, but to me, to adapt uh, to in an ever-changing world uh, and how creativity plays a part is to start looking uh, to widen your horizons, to open up mm. your eyes. To really see everything around you, everything like really, really everything. Mm. Because previously, when we were working, you know, we had a routine. We had a work routine. Okay, okay. Morning, wake up, seven a.m. Wake up, you know, do our stuff. Eight a.m. Take the eight a.m. train. Yeah, we don't look at everyone else around us. We just know that eight a.m. train. Eight a.m. The train will arrive at the platform. Okay, in the platform, read news. Like you know, so we just stick to a, a, a particular rigid routine, and then when suddenly something happens, you know, like um, uh, suddenly uh, okay, we got retrenched, then we do we, the routine gets disrupted. We don't know mm. what to do, or yep. maybe they change. Uh, okay, you don't work here anymore. Change you to work somewhere else. Okay, so this this was what happened to me as well during this period. Mm. Suddenly, all my all my jobs uh got uh, almost all my jobs got cancelled. Some Classes got cancelled, some shows got postponed, or into a I don't know where they you know, got cancelled. So I, I really didn't know. There was a period of time I really didn't know what to do. So what I what I did was I just sit down, not 
sit down, walk around, look, look around, really look around. So I look around. Yeah, I went for walks, you know, for, for walk, you know, ride bike, ride bicycle everywhere. And when I look around, then you will realize there are opportunities everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's when uh yeah, that's when I see uh, I looked around and I saw okay this this may be a bit uh maybe a bit simplistic or a bit uh, far fetched, I don't know. So I look around, I saw jungles and forests, you know, forests being cut down, you know, around this around my place. Yeah. So last time there were a lot of forests and then they were they cutting down for everything. I see a bit sad. Then a bit sad, then I see hey, uh I used to enjoy being in the forest until I hate it so much. But now when I see a forest, I feel sad. When was that? During NS. So I then I started blogging about NS also. Ah. Uh, got things to do. Yeah. So I start talking about NS. And then uh, I used to enjoy photography, but I didn't have time to, do, to take photos. So I walk around, walk around, and I see, hey, there are many places in Singapore, uh, um, many places that I've never been before. Maybe this is the time for me to go. Right, so I walk around, take photos, you know, uh, I post it here and there. These are the places that I've never been before. Maybe some people have never been before. So, so I took photos, my students see, oh, where is this? I've never been here before. Ah, okay, go lah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, like, maybe some might say that these are, these are the things that we do, but uh, tak mendatangkan hasil. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> doesn't bring in any income. But uh, at first, I thought of it also, like, ah, I blah, blah, blah. Who's gonna read? You know, maybe nobody is gonna read, and it doesn't bring me any income. But just keep doing things that you love to make mm. sure that your spirits keep going. Maybe True. one day I will, I will, I will, I will compile those blog entries into one book. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct, correct, yeah. correct. So just and that would have, that that would definitely help other people, right? In terms of that yeah, documentation. Yeah. Of your stories, yeah. So how how yeah. many chapters can you talk about the blog? How many chapters already so far? Uh in the <laughs> in LinkedIn, right? Currently in LinkedIn. Uh actually I put the, the, the blog in my, my website there. The website oh your there. website, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so if you go to my website, there, there's mm-hmm. the blog, uh the blog uh, there is this option and you go to the blog. Mm. Yeah, for there are a lot of series there, but uh one of the more a consistent series for for this moment is the is the army series. Yeah, ah. the, is the army series. But I post the links on Facebook and on LinkedIn as well, lah. So you can just click from the LinkedIn. So mm-hmm. it's should be the blog. But yeah, so far, uh, ten entries. I try to make it as chronological as possible from the day I started, uh, from the day I enlist until all the way until I finish my reservist uh, duties, ah. if I can remember. Yeah, one of the things <laughs> that I did this is because. I want to document before I start forgetting them. Yeah, because these are interesting experiences. Even yes, when yes. we try to think back on the things that we went through in uh, NS full time, oh, shucks, some of the things that we start to forget already. But they correct, were all interesting correct. things. Yeah, so before I, before I start forgetting, I think I want to document everything as much as I can. Yeah, and yeah, it's also uh, good to a good workout for the brain as well, isn't it? And that is one of the like you mentioned, creativity. Creativity is to find problem, eh, to find thing to work. Right, you have to think, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then this will definitely help. And I like you mentioned about looking at things, horizon, open up your horizon. Yeah, because in um creativity is about getting. In order to get ideas, you need to look at possible ideas, isn't it? And to get possible mm. ideas means to look at things. Wow, wonderful advice. Thank you, thank you, mm. Anwar, for that. I really appreciate oh. you. Uh, for yeah. Oh, can I share? Just, uh, just yes, yes, share. please. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is this uh, uh, looking around, right? So during this period of time, I I came up, I tried to do this this thing. Um, it, so far, it has been uh, I had good feedback from from people who has been following my Instagram. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, from my Instagram, uh, a lot mm. of uh, good feedback. I, I even had people who who emulate. So what the idea was, uh, I look around when I look around because. I, I'm still a playwright, I'm a writer. Mm. So what mm. I do was, uh, every day when I walk around, I will take pictures, I take photos, uh, or maybe photos from my, my stash la, inside my phone, so I take photos. And then I use these photos inside my Instagram account. I post it on my Insta story every morning. Every mm. day there will be this one 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 uh, one story. It says, it's, it's called a story a day. So wow. I will post a, yeah, I will post a photo with a bit of a story uh, in it. So like, for example, like, uh, like that, uh, a photo or something, right? A photo mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. And then I create a very short story 
based on the photo. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, like for example, for example, very simple picture, a picture of a cat, the point that, you know, ah. and then I create, a, I create a story about the cat. You know, so every day is every day. This one photo every day is uh, is a story a day. So yeah, I had uh, teachers, kindergarten teachers who, who sees it and oh yeah, we can create stories for everyday things. So yeah, so, yeah. so that's what I meant by like walking around. Okay, but look at everyday things, and everyday things can be an inspiration or a stimuli for uh, creating new stories. Uh, maybe in the future for me to write more stories. So oh, now I already have a lot, a lot, a lot of stories just waiting to be created into. Oh, <laughs> into wow, 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 wow! <laughs> And yeah, this can yeah. can be made into a book for teachers, you know, yeah. books for yeah, teachers yeah. to get use as a trigger, whatsoever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I already have teachers who ask me that, hey, uh, yeah, I should do this for my school. So I, there, there, there were there are a few preschools and pre preschool centers who create this uh, a story a day so that their followers uh, or their their parents will see. Oh, so these are what their children do every day. You know? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. wow, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, talking, talking, talking about um people commenting, teachers commenting. We also have um a few. You no, know, we have a comment in our live chat. We have uh comment from Noraini Bandi. He said, "Congratulations, <laughs> I think probably for for sharing." And I think he said, "That's awesome." Because probably uh, uh on your picture on your photo that you create story. Yeah, I thought oh. I think he mentioned that. That's awesome. I think wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Noraini, for sharing your comments. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much and that also bring us to the end of our program and so if you want to get hold of um anwar actually if you can sit down there you can connect with anwar linkedin uh go to linkedin anwar hadi uh, facebook page anwar hadi ramli and you can see his website as well anwarhadi.com where you can where we can actually find out more of your blogs your articles Right, yeah. and if you um want to know more about this program, creativity talks, feel free to subscribe to us, uh, so that you can receive more updated info. We'll get as many info as possible to help us develop uh different ways on how we can develop our creativity. All right, and of course, um, be besides connecting Anwar, I also invite you to contact myself as well. <laughs> uh, YouTube channel, yeah. if you're not subscribed, uh, subscribe now. I can uh. Drop me a message at LinkedIn and Facebook page as well. So once again, uh, thank you very much, Anwar, for sharing your experiences. Which and I hope that this really helps the audience and to learn on how to develop our creativity. So uh, probably any last words from Anwar to the audience. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know. Um, I, I'm not so sure about last words because. Uh, You can always get words from me at any time. Wonderful, I'm wonderful. Yeah, I'm always there. You can always connect with me at any time, anywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. But but I guess if, if this is the last word for the program, would parting be, shot, parting shot. Yeah, yeah, parting shot for the program mm-hmm. would be, uh, hey, life goes on. Just have fun. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I I love that life goes on. Just have fun because when we have fun, <laughs> we can find things to do yeah, and we can. Better. Exactly, exactly. All right. It's a wonderful ending words. Thank you very much once again. Uh, if you have not been watching Creativity Talks, feel free to join us on our regular programs. So today, Hazrat Idros and Ano Hadramli signing off and I hope to see you in the next Creativity Talks. With that, see you in the next video. Bye-bye. All right. If you find this video useful, do like, comment and share so that more people can benefit from this. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button below so that you can receive updates of our upcoming videos. Till then, Hazrat Iroh signing off. See you in the next video.